Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about something called insulin resistance of your brain. Okay. Now insulin resistance is a condition where you have the pancreas or other parts of the body producing too much insulin because it's not connecting into the cells. So we have a situation where we have insulin there, but it's not available. So it creates all sorts of problems. Another name for insulin resistance would, uh, of the brain would be called peripheral insulin resistance. Now, in the brain, insulin controls your food intake, your metabolism, your set point, and it's also intimately involved with cognitive function and memory. Okay? When there's too much insulin or sugar in the brain, you're going to have destruction of various uh, parts of the brain. You're going to have neurodegeneration, which is breakdown, inflammation of the hypothalamus, destruction of the hippocampus, which is the structure in the brain that acts as a relay switch into your database, your file cabinet of memory. So you're going to get uh, dementia and poor memory. Okay? There's even a, a new treatment called nasal insulin spray, which fights forgetfulness. Okay? So they're basically bypassing insulin resistance, spraying it right through the nasal passages, right up into the brain. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, goes right in um, as a way of bypassing insulin resistance. And it creates significant improvements in cognitive function, which is fascinating. The problem is you add more insulin, it's not getting rid of the cause of the problem. It's a temporary fix and it's going to actually make things worse because what creates insulin resistance is too much insulin. Okay. You get a little relief, but then you have a lot of side effects down the road. So there's a lot of brain problems with dysfunctional insulin, but in order to develop some of these symptoms from insulin resistance, it starts in the mitochondria, mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay. And one of the key nutrients that protects the mitochondria from uh, becoming dysfunctional is vitamin B1, thiamine. If you have enough B1 in the cells, um, you're going to have a lot less symptoms, if any, from high levels of insulin and high levels of um, sugar. And it also protects the nerves too, uh, as in peripheral neuropathy of the fingertips and the, um, the toes. Now there's even a condition called Korsakoff's syndrome, which is a B1 deficiency, a very severe B1 deficiency. And take a wild guess what kind of symptoms that these people have. Memory problems, apathy, dementia. So I believe that without this B1, you can't protect the mitochondria and you can develop all sorts of dysfunctional cells that can affect all sorts of things, memory, nerve damage, you name it. Now, how do we become deficient in B1? High carbohydrates, okay? High carbohydrates. Alcohol will deplete it. Liver damage, chemotherapy. Now, if you look up some of the studies on brain insulin resistance, here's one. High fat diet induces brain insulin resistance and cognitive impairment in mice. Now, wow, they're saying high fat diets cause insulin resistance? Wow, that's a ketogenic diet, isn't it? Well, let's go ahead and read a little further and find out what these mice really ate. High fat diet, 40% of the energy from fat, okay, with 42 grams of liquid sugar. This is not the ketogenic diet. Okay. It's a high fat plus high sugar diet. Anytime you add sugar with fat or sugar with protein, you dramatically increase insulin. Okay. You worsen insulin, you magnify it. It exaggerates the problem. So unfortunately the media takes hold of this. And now the, the next thing you see is ketogenic uh, diet is dangerous for the body. It creates diabetes and insulin resistance. No, it's not the high fat. It's the high sugar and it's the high sugar in combination with the high fat. So if you're doing a ketogenic diet and you're doing it correctly, there's not going to be any damage. In fact, you can improve insulin in the brain dramatically. How do you do it? By doing keto and intermittent fasting with taking vitamin B1, but make sure it's in the form of a natural source, a nutritional yeast. That would be really important. So if one of my relatives had dementia, what I would do is I'd put them on the keto program, I'd put them on intermittent fasting, and I would put them on a very strong vitamin B1 in the form of a fat soluble version of B1. It's called benthotamine. Let me spell this. Benthotamine. This is a fat soluble B1. You can get it from the health food store. And I would 
recommend taking this four times a day. So you're taking a lot of it, but it's going to help innervate uh, the brain because it's fat soluble. It goes right through the layer of the fat cells. And it's great for uh, peripheral neuropathy. It's also good for shingles. So there you have it. Insulin resistance on your brain. Thanks for watching. So I want to know what you're interested in as far as an, a future video. Click the link down below and share some ideas I want to hear.